Hey broskies and girlskies, welcome to a new series I like to call Techie Tidbit Tuesday, or TTT. I'll be uploading it sometime around Tuesday every week or so, and I'll be talking about cool tech stuff that happened in the past week in the world of tech, so stay tuned I guess. And this is my first time, so please be gentle in the comments. Okay, so starting off with something quick and easy, you remember that weird AI pin company, Humane, that had this overpriced $700 AI pin thingy that kinda sucked? Well, it got bought by HP, so who knows what's gonna happen to it now. We do know what will happen to the existing AI pins out there though, they're all gonna be bricked. If you bought it within 90 days though, you can return it. That's something, I guess. Rest in peace AI pin and rest in peace humane. For now, at least. Moving on, because of government pressure, Apple has removed end-to-end -end encryption in the UK. Apple has a feature called Advanced Data Protection for iCloud, and if you use it on photos and files and stuff, only you can see it. No one else can. Not even Apple. However, the UK was like, nuh uh, what if there's a criminal who's hiding sketchy stuff on their phone? How are we gonna access their stuff? It's gonna hinder criminal investigation. And Apple's like, but privacy. But the UK government persisted. So now, if you're in the UK, sorry, but you don't get advanced data protection. So theoretically, because your stuff isn't encrypted anymore, Apple could read your data in iCloud and would be able to give it to authorities should they be legally asked to do so. So that's unfortunate for our friends over there in the UK, but Apple does say that Apple remains committed to offering our users the highest level of security for their personal data and are hopeful that we will be able to do so in the future in the United Kingdom. So not all hope is lost just yet. Speaking of Apple, they introduced the newest member of the family last Wednesday, February 19th, even though it's using some not so new parts. The iPhone 16. The SE is dead. May it rest in peace along with the home button, touch ID on the iPhone, and truly small iPhones being sold. And truly small phones being sold in general. The iPhone 16 e is basically a recycled iPhone 14 design with a couple tweaks. You get USB-C instead of lightning, action button instead of the mute switch, which allows you to access visual intelligence, single camera, so no ultra wide, but this single camera is an upgraded 48 megapixel shooter that's supposed to have a two in one camera design, but it's just digitally cropping the 48 megapixel photo to a 12 megapixel, but it's just digitally, but it's just digitally, but it's just digitally, I can't say digitally, but it's just digitally cropping the 48 megapixel photo to 12 megapixels, so it's really not that fancy. The 16 e has the A18, chip that the regular 16 has which allows for Apple intelligence but with one less GPU core although that isn't gonna make a huge difference to the average user. What will make a difference is the battery though. This is claiming to have even better battery life than the standard iPhone 16 and it's supposed to have the best battery life in a 6.1 inch iPhone partially thanks to the new Apple C1 modem, the first modem on an iPhone made by Apple, not Qualcomm. This should be interesting for the future of the iPhone. However, there's a couple of essential iPhone features missing from the 16e, like MagSafe, which has been a thing since the iPhone 12, and the Ultra Wideband chip, which lets you do precision finding for air takes and stuff, which has been a thing since the iPhone 11. Also, no cinematic mode, which has been standard since the iPhone 13 in 2021, or sensor shift stabilization, which was also on the standard iPhone 13. However, these are all niche camera features most people don't care too much about. People buying the 16e just want an iPhone that does iPhone stuff. And stuff like that battery upgrade is pretty tempting because that's a meaningful change that everyone will be able to recognize. No MagSafe though, or ultra wide band chip, or ultra wide camera lens. But hey, at least that has Apple intelligence, the best AI system ever. Why my PC's on. Honestly, I was considering buying this phone to review it for the channel before Apple officially unveiled it, but now that they did, it doesn't look that compelling to me, especially after that price. I have the 599 American Eagle dollars and a whopping 899 Canadian Looney Birds. Yikes, this thing is over a thousand Canadian bucks after tax for just the base model with 128 gigs. I can see this being a hit with carrier deals though, but honestly, a lot of people are probably just gonna bite the bullet and get a U16 at that price point, or even pay the extra money per month for the standard 16. Or maybe get an Android phone even, since there's no truly budget iPhone anymore. But you might be saying, nothing is better than Apple. And you're right, maybe. Nothing might be better than Apple, especially after they showed a sneak peek at the Nothing Phone 3A Pro. This phone has a Snapdragon chip, which is a pretty big upgrade from the Phone 2A's MediaTek chip. It's got a pretty awesome new design that some people don't like, but honestly, I really like it. It's probably one of the most unique looking phones that's come out in a long while. I've always loved Nothing's design style and this still remains unremarkably like Nothing while still doing something fresh. We don't know too much about the phone just yet since it's set to officially avail on March 4th, but we do know some stuff including the fact that there's a periscope camera lens which will improve zoom features and it's a pretty epic feature for a phone at this price range. What makes me really excited is that this is the Phone 3A. This is the cheap one. So these are good signs that the standard Phone 3 is gonna be pretty awesome. Meanwhile, Microsoft unveiled the Majorana 1 a couple days ago, a new quantum chip. I keep reading it as Majorna, but it's Majorana, I think. 
Hey, it kinda sounds like goofy name aside, this is pretty sick. This could potentially bring breakthroughs in fields like the medical field and in creating new materials and a bunch of other cool stuff. And also they're kinda yapping about how they created a new state of matter. Anyways, if this works out in Microsoft's favor, then this could be a pretty cool breakthrough in quantum computing. So that's pretty darn sick. And last but not least, not really tech related, but I like space, so I'm gonna tell you guys about space. Um, SpaceX is launching the eighth flight test of Starship this Friday. Time is yet to be confirmed, but this is the first flight test since Flight 7, which ended in a fiery, although aesthetically pleasing matter. Looking forward to watching it live. All right, that's it for this first Techie Tidbit Tuesday. Let me know how I did in the comments below and comment below what you want to see next, if there's a story you want me to cover, or if you even want something like Techie Tidbit Tuesday. But anyways, like and subscribe, and I guess that's it. Be awesome and stay techy. Bye. Hi, hi. Nuh uh. Speaking of, speaking of, speaking of app, speaking of Apple, speaking of, speaking of app, speaking of app, speaking of Apple. But is this digitally cropping? But is this digitally? But is this digitally crop? No, I don't want to turn you on. Turn off. Go away. Oh. Nice. It came out chat. Yo. Where, why is he in a white room?